Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, lesson 10-5, add mixed numbers. Remember, a mixed number is a whole number and a fraction. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote tonight is by Mae Jemison, who is the first African-American female astronaut and scientist. She said, the thing that I have done throughout my life is to do the best job that I can and to be me. I think she, you're going to see some really cool pictures of her. Our learning goal tonight is to add mixed numbers with different denominators. Here are our individual lesson learning goals, and you can see some cool pictures of Mae Jemison and the Endeavor, which is the craft that she was on. Um, you're going to follow these steps exactly when you are using the strategy. So the first thing you're going to do is to make use the make a cake strategy to find the LCM of the two different denominators. Then you're going to create equivalent fractions using your LCM or your new common denominator as the new denominator. Convert the mixed numbers to improper fractions, add those improper fractions together, and then convert the improper fractions back into a mixed number. Then simplify if needed. If I can tell you one thing about tonight's work, it's that it takes a long time to do each problem. But don't just get bored or quit or give up or say it takes too much time. This is easy steps. You just have to remember to do every step, but you can use your learning goals checklist. Here we go. Here is our example. I love that picture of Mae Jemison up there in the corner. Um, and that picture below is was on 10 tips on how astronauts eat food. So they're eating in space. You can see that they're kind of floating around. Our first problem is 1 and 7 eighths plus 1 and 1 fourth. Let's go ahead and try that now. So I've written it vertically like I would want you to write it. And in the practice exercises, I actually wrote it horizontally. But when we do it on the bamboo tablet, I expect you to be writing it vertically. You know how to do that because we enter it in our clickers horizontally also. Um, first of all, our first step says to make a cake to find the new LCM so that we can have some common denominators. Because remember, we can't add two fractions together that have different denominators because the pieces are different sizes. So we're going to put both of our denominators in a cake. I like to just put the smaller denominator first because then I can use it if I need to simplify in the end sometimes. So we ask ourselves, what will divide evenly into both 4 and 8? And you might use 2 and you might use 4. It doesn't matter. So you're going to come up with the same answer on top. So 2 goes into 4 2 times. 2 goes into 8 4 times. Layer number 2 of our cake. What divides evenly into 2 and 4? 2 does. 2 goes into 2 1 time. 2 goes into 4 2 times. Third layer of our cake. I like this cake. What divides evenly into 1 and 2? Just 1. 1 goes into 1 1 times, and 1 goes into 2 2 times. When I've repeated these two denominators here, 1 and 2 and 1 and 2, I'm ready to make my L. This is a crazy looking L because we had so many layers. But remember, we multiply all the layers and all the way around the top to find our LCM. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 times 2 is 8. Our LCM equals 8. You could also ask yourself, will 4 divide evenly into 8? And if it does, 8 is your common denominator. But you've got to be really accurate in making those decisions. So I'm first, I'm making equivalent fractions now. So I ask myself, what do I multiply by 8 to get 8? 1. 8 times 1. So whatever I do to my denominator, I have to do to my numerator. 7 times 1 is 7. Now I come down here. What do I do to 4 to get to 8? Multiply by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. Now, I'm ready to add these together, but first I'm going to convert them into improper fractions. And here's something I want you to realize. This whole number 1 and 7 eighths is still here. 1 and 7 eighths, that shouldn't be connected, but I don't have to erase it quickly. And then this equals 1 and 2 eighths. Now I can make an improper fraction and multiply them together to get my answer. 8 times eight, 1 is 8. eight. Now remember, to, I, I, I want to make sure I make this very clear if you haven't watched this particular video. We are taking this mixed number and converting it to an improper fraction. So 8 times 1 is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. And my denominator stays the same. Here we go. I'm doing the same thing here. 
8 times 1 is 8, 8 plus 7 is 15. And my denominator stays the same. Now I can add these and I add my numerators. 15 plus 10 is 25 and my denominator stays the same. Here's where I ask myself, am I done? Mm -mm. Because I have an improper fraction here. My numerator is greater than my denominator. So remember the cheerleading story. If the taller cheerleader is on top, it's going to be really hard for this gal to hold her. So the cheerleading coach makes a rule that taller cheerleaders always go on the bottom. So 25 has to go home to the house. Here's the house inside the division house. And this little cheerleader here is going to go knock on the door to make sure this cheerleader is okay and she's not mad or anything. So 8 goes into 2, it doesn't. 8 goes into 25 three times. 8 times 3 is 24. And 25 minus 24 is 1. So remember, this remainder is my new numerator. And this is still my denominator. So 25 eighths equals 3 and 1 eighth. And I'm going to put a giant box around this so that you can see that. Now, the reason I did this it, this way is so that you're not having to borrow and carry from this whole number. When you convert to an improper fraction, it makes it a little bit easier. Because if I had done seven plus two is nine, I would have had, and one plus one is two, I would have had two and nine eighths, and I still would have had to convert from an improper fraction, but I would have had to carry some whole numbers over. You can see them having fun with anti-gravity and then just doing science experiments in space. When scientists and astronauts go into space, they conduct science experiments in uh, an anti-gravity zone. Number one, you see I've written them horizontally. I've left big spaces between the whole number and the fraction, but make sure you write them vertically. Two and two-fifths plus five and five-sixths. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Go back and check out your example notes if you need to. Did you write 8 and 7 thirtieths? Let's see how we did that. Okay, so we're looking at 2 and 2 fifths and then plus 5 and 5 sixths. Remember, these are whole numbers. These are the fractions we're working with. So our denominators are different. We can't add those together. So we're going to put them in a cake. I'm going to put them up high up here. I'll put my smaller denominator first and my larger denominator last, but it doesn't really matter. What we ask ourselves, what goes into both five and six? And whenever these two denominators are just one away from one different than the other, five plus one is six, six minus five is one, we know the only thing that will divide into them is one. So one goes into five, five times. One goes into six, six times. I've already repeated my two denominators, so I'm ready to find my LCM. I'm gonna multiply all the way around. 1 times 5 is 5, and 5 times 6 is 30. So my LCM equals 30. So I'm actually going to change the color of my pen here because I want to do the new problem so that you can really tell your numbers apart. Um, so before I move my whole numbers over, and it is so important that you do move those whole numbers over or your answer is going to be crazy wrong, but I'm gonna go ahead and find my equivalent fractions. So I ask myself, what do I multiply five by to get 30? And it's times six. So two times six is 12. Then I come down here to this denominator. What do I multiply by six to get 30? Five. So five times five is 25. Now, this is where I'm gonna add my whole number in really quickly, okay? So we've got some big numbers here. And the first thing I'm going to do is find out if I add these together, is it going to be greater than 30? And it is. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply my mixed numbers and add my mixed numbers because I multiply and then I add to get an improper fraction. So here I do 30 times my whole number 2 and I get 60. And then I'm going to add 12. So I have 72. And then my denominator stays the same. Now I'm going to multiply 30 times 5. That sounds a little tougher, but remember I can use my mental math strategy. 3 times 5 is 15. Add my 0, so I have 150. And 150, 150 plus 25 is 175. 
30th. Now, I don't want to add those in my head. And the reason I don't want to is because I might make a mistake. And I don't want to do all this crazy hard fraction work and then make a mistake adding a really simple addition problem. So 5 plus 2 is 7, 7 plus 7 is 14, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So my answer is 247 thirtieths, which is a completely inappropriate fraction because 247 is huge compared to 30. So let's come over here. I'm going to change this to a red pen so it doesn't get in our way. And I'm going to divide 247 by 30. Now you might use the crazy way to divide and if you need to go back and review by looking at another lesson you can. But I'm going to use the standard algorithm. 30 goes into 2, it doesn't. 30 goes into 24, it doesn't. Now I'm going to estimate how many times 33, this first number here, goes into these two numbers, 24, and it's about 8 times. If I multiply 8 times 30, using my mental math strategies, I get 240 because 8 times 3 is 24 and then I bring that 0 over and that is less than this so it's perfect. So I did a good job estimating that. I'm going to use my 8, multiply 8 times 30 again, I did that right here, and when I subtract 247 minus 240 I get a remainder of 7. That is my new numerator and 30 is my denominator. It stays the same. So now I have 7 thirtieths as my fraction, and I know that I can't simplify this fraction part here because 7 is a prime number, meaning it only has two factors, 1 and 7. And it will not, 7 will not divide evenly into 30, so I'm done. So as I write my final answer, 8 and 7 thirtieths, that's a totally huge amount of work, but what a fabulous amount of work it is. Hopefully you organized it a little better on your paper. I'm kind of limited to space with the bamboo tablet. Number two, four and one ninth plus one and one third. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write five and four ninths? Let's work that one together. So again, I'm not going to look at my whole numbers right now. I'm just looking at my fraction and my fraction, my denominators are different. So I'm going to make a cake up here. Three and nine in the bottom layer of my cake. That's my two denominators. And I ask myself what number will divide evenly into both three and nine, and it's three. Three goes into three one time. Three goes into nine three times. That's the second layer of my cake. What will divide evenly into both one and three? One. One goes into one one time. One goes into three three times, and I'm ready to multiply them together and find my LCM. You do know that when you have ones in here, you can kind of ignore them because it's not going to change your answer. So three times three is nine. My LCM equals nine. So that's my new common denominator. So I'm not going to write my whole number in there quite yet because I'm looking at my fraction parts right now. I'm asking myself, what do I do to nine to get nine times one? What do I do to one? I multiply it by 1, just like the denominator. 1 times 1 is 1. What do I do to 3 to get 9 times 3? So 1 times 3 is 3. You notice I always kind of make a double equal sign here, even though you don't have to. It just keeps it separate from my fraction bars. So now I'm going to bring over my whole numbers, 4 and 1, and I'm going to convert my mixed numbers to an improper fraction. I actually could just add these. You know what? And maybe I'll just do that this time. Because when I add my numerators 1 and plus 3, I get 4. And 4 ninths is not going to be an improper fraction. So I really don't need to convert to improper fractions here and then convert back. I'll just add my numerators. 1 plus 3 is 4. And my denominator stays the same. And then I can just add my whole numbers. 4 plus 1 is 5. That's kind of two different strategies, but this way, if I had an improper fraction here, I would have to take the whole number that I get when I make it and add it to this number here, these two whole numbers added together. So that's another way you could do it. I think converting to an improper fraction is probably a better way. It's time to practice word problems. Here it is. That was orbital, wasn't it? 
Ella uses six and five twelfths pieces of paper to write a poem. She then uses four and five eighths pieces of paper to write a play. How much paper does she use in all? Look for those key words to tell you what operation to use. Use the steps to go through and solve your problem correctly. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write 11 and 1 24ths? My answer is not completely correct. Why? That's right, I didn't write it in a complete sentence. In order for my answer to be correct, when I see words, I have to answer in words. So I should have written, Ella used 11 and 1 24ths pieces of paper in all. That would have been a great answer. I hope you did that. So I've already written them down vertically. I'm going to put both of my denominators, because they're different, in a cake to find the LCM. So I ask myself what divides evenly into 8 and 12, and I'm going to go with 4. I could use 2, but I'm going to use 4 this time. 4 goes into 8 2 times, 4 goes into 12 3 times. What divides evenly into 2 and 3? They're only 1 apart, so 1 is the only thing that will divide into them. 1 goes into 2 2 times, and 1 goes into 3 3 times. I'm ready to make my LCM all the way around. Can ignore this one. 4 times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24. My LCM is 24. So I'll come back up here and go to my blue. I may not have left myself very much space. What do I do to 12 to get 24? Times 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. What do I do to 8 to get 24? Times 3. So 5 times 3 is 15. Now, I can add these together. If I add, well, let's go ahead and put our whole number here because I do not want to forget to add my whole number because that's a lot of pieces of paper that would get left out if I didn't add those whole numbers in. If I add my numerators 10 plus 15, I get 25. And if I do that, I'm going to have to convert. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to show you a different way of doing this. If you want to convert these to improper fractions and then convert them back to mixed numbers, go ahead. But I wanted to show you what I was talking about earlier. 10 plus 15 is 25. And my denominator is 24. What this means, 6 plus 4 is 10. I'll go ahead and add my whole numbers. This is an improper fraction here. So if I was putting this 25 goes in the house, 24 goes and knocks on the door, 24 goes into 25 one time, 24 times 1 is 24. My remainder is 1, so that's my numerator, and my denominator stays the same. I essentially have to add this right here, this whole number, to this number here. So my new fraction is 1 24th, but that whole number I take and add to this. So 10 plus 1 is 11. So my final answer is 11 and 1 24th. It's time to challenge yourself. Caden used 9 as an estimate for 3 and 1 6th plus 5 and 7 eighths. Is his answer reasonable? What is the actual answer? I want you to figure out if the estimate is reasonable before you find the actual answer, otherwise you're not truly estimating. Explain your answer in your flip journal and come back tomorrow ready to check it. Finishing up, review your learning goals. Did you understand each of them? Did you check them off as you went through them? Are you, do you have a lot of questions? I expect you to have questions tonight. Write down specifically what of those individual lesson learning goals you were struggling with so that we can practice them more in small group tomorrow. Um, this is a hard lesson, lots of steps. We're gonna keep practicing marvelous mixed numbers. You have completed lesson 10-5, add mixed numbers. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.